Okay, so um, we're putting our HHO system on this motor now and many times I've watched actually almost every time I've seen guys adding HHO to a motor uh, such as these ones, carburetted motor what they do is they take their HHO um, delivery hose which is delivering the gas and they shove it inside the air box in front of the carburetor or they've got it going straight in front of the carburetor so the gas enters the front of the carby travels through goes into the motor so I have to ask why would you do that you're going to see very little advantage doing it that way the whole idea of adding HHO to a motor is um, the HHO is a fuel in itself so we want to reduce the fuel going into the motor and supplement that reduction with our HHO. Having HHO we can run leaner. So putting your HHO gas straight in the back of the carby is not going to cause that motor to run leaner. Maybe very slightly but not what we want. Because the way the carburetor works is air flowing in here goes past the venturi which sucks the fuel up. So if we go sticking our HHO in front of the carby like that, <coughs> the motor's still going to be sucking the same volume of gas air mix in to the engine. The same amount of air is still going to be flowing across the venturi that sucks the fuel up and delivers it to the motor. And so you're going to see no reduction in fuel, or very, very little. So just plonking the outlet or the delivery line of your HHO into the back of the carburetor is not going to do you any favours. You're not going to reduce the amount of fuel that the motor draws through the carburetor because it's going to be drawing the same amount of gas through that carby, thus drawing up the same amount of fuel through the venturi um, the only difference is now you've got a bit of HHO gas in there. So you're basically taking a fuel, putting it in your carby, and dumping the fuel that you've worked hard for straight on top of the fuel air mix already being delivered to the motor. So now you're just adding more fuel. We don't want to add more fuel, we want to reduce the fuel. So the correct way to do it in this case, um, if you've got fuel injection and computers, you're screwed. Don't even waste your time um, unless you're going to go and have your computer remapped because the O2 sensors um, and all that palaver are going to uh, tell the computer that, hang on, this motor is running a little bit lean, which they do. That's the whole reason for adding HHO. And so the next thing it does is up the fuel ratio into your engine. So you kill the effect of having the HHO. So, um, and that's basically exactly what you're doing by feeding the HHO in the front of the carby. Um, this motor basically doesn't know that it's getting it. And I'm still going to deliver the same amount of fuel into the engine. The HHO allows us to lift compression ratio beyond that that you would be able to with standard fuel. Uh, here in Australia our standard fuel is 95 octane um, so it's just a uh, El Cheapo fuel and we can raise that octane by introducing HHO into the motor which means we can raise the compression. So we're not going to chuck it in the back of the carby we want to reduce the fuel because we're adding a second fuel. So what we're going to do is um, I'm going to grind this fin off here level with the bottom of the inlet port and we're going to drill a hole up through our inlet port and we're going to push a bit of tube up there. We'll then cut this tube off on an angle so the open face of the angle cut is facing the inlet valve and this will cause a venturi effect like it does in the carby and it will suck our gas through. 
HO2 um, don't use pressure far too dangerous make sure your HHO system is under a vacuum which is what we will achieve when we put this here tube into our inlet port which is cut on an angle to represent a venturi um, this will put a vacuum on your HHO system which means less HHO in the system and in the event of a backfire which these motors are prone to do if your exhaust valve isn't, uh, your inlet valve isn't quite seating um, and they have a waste spark system um, and they also have inlet exhaust overlap on the rock um, you can quite easily get a backfire through these things especially when you're fiddling around with um, mixtures and all that so um, if you've got a vacuum on your HHO system it means you've got less gas stored in that system and in the event of a backfire you're not going to blow the roller doors off your shed as well as you across the room you will still get a pop but it will not be as bad as if you've got that HHO system under pressure so if you're going to do this remember it is dangerous it's not completely safe um, and make sure you run your or set up your HHO system so the whole system is under a vacuum and not under pressure that lessens the chance that you're going to send yourself into orbit in the event of a backfire so I'm going to go ahead and grind that fin down so I can drill a hole up in here and fit our tube, where did I file that, there it is now you'll see I've got a little T piece here um, I'm just going to block that off for the time being but I want that there um, in case I decide to switch to LPG um, or auto gas instead of using the fuel in the carby that means my inlet line for that is also already there um, auto gas also allows us to raise the compression ratio so with a um, internal combustion engine fairly common knowledge the higher you can get the compression ratio um, the more thermal efficiency your engine will have which means it will deliver more power to the crank and from the um, stored energy in the fuel <coughs> and less of that stored energy is dissipated as heat uh, this one here I shaved 2 mil off the head um, I could have gone further it's still running quite well and safe at high RPM there's no pinging or anything um, so once we add the HHO gas we'll give it a run see if we've improved it and um, will improve the efficiency of the motor at all and um, if yes we're going to start really pushing this engine to its limits and I'll shave another mill off the head and see how we go uh, I do have my compression tester here I actually remembered it this time um, when running compression tests on these you must remember that they have an auto decompressor in them and um, this is something we must keep with a starting system like this um, when we're raising the compression high um, if we remove that there's no way in hell we'd get this thing turning over um, so that's a bit of a problem when we're doing a compression test I'm hoping the um, electric motor is going to spin this motor fast enough so as it disengages the um, auto decompressor and um, we'll be able to get a um, pressure reading off it which we're going to do now so I'll go and get my tester set all up and we'll spin it up and we'll see how we go but um, I just wanted to uh, run you all by that um, as I said there's very very little point in putting your HHO straight into the uh, back of the carburetor because it will still suck the same amount of fuel in if we have our HHO mix going in after the carby there will be slightly less gas flowing through our carburetor thus reducing the amount of fuel that the uh, engine draws in which we are supplementing with another fuel ok I'll go and get my compression tester we'll set it up and see if we can get some uh, readings out of it uh, like I said hopefully the motor will spin this engine over fast enough um, that the decompressor will disengage ok um you'll probably see there I have the rocker cover off around um, 
the exhaust valve off a bit because that's the one the uh, auto decompressor works on. It only opens the valve a couple of mil. So what I did was got it on the auto decompressor rock and then uh, loosened off the valve until it was loose. Now the electric start has a little problem, um, a little trouble turning it over and we'll see why. Uh, we have our compression gauge hooked up. Let's see what we get. You ready for this? We have about 200 psi. Um, as far as our uh, compression pressure goes. So uh, up fairly high. We could probably take it to 220 before we start running into trouble. But um, standard they're normally about 180. So uh, 170 to 180. And um, we've lifted it up quite a bit. So we're close to uh, running into detonation or pre-ignition dramas but I still think we could get a little bit more out of it and once we add our HHO we'll definitely get some more out of it so we could probably take another mil off that head that would be three mil in total um, anyone mucking around with these little motors while we're at it like I said in previous videos um, these are the Chinese version of the ever reliable Honda some of these motors you get are garbage and blow up within weeks. Um, use very soft bolts that strip, pop off, and the rip starts crap himself. But some of these motors are very good, and in fact, some are actually made in, in some spots better than the Honda. So, if you're going to go and grab one of these motors, you will find, like the Honda, um, they have these pressed rockers. Um, mostly found, uh, you normally get three colours with these, uh, four colours. The black motor, blue motor, red motor, red and white, um, and the yellow one. This head is actually off a blue motor, which has these rockers. The yellow ones you normally find um, on pressure cleaners and that. Um, and they are normally a better quality motor and I'll show you why this head here if you can see that this head here is actually off of this motor and instead of it having these pressed um, rockers which do have a bad habit of breaking because they have a very big hole in the guts to suit the uh, round um, long nut that goes on there so they can rock on the round bit. Um, the yellow motors normally have these. These are cast steel rockers and they are very strong and very um, tolerant to RPM. These ones like to snap. These ones do not. This is being saved with this head for our super build. Once we get all our testing done we're going to go and build a motor and I'm going to do a series of videos on that on every modification you need to make in order to get the best results from your HHO system. And we're starting with this motor but we're going to, um, once we've got this one up and running and got a few results, we're going to go and do even better again. So, look for the yellow coloured motors, which normally come on pressure cleaners. Um, I forget what they call them, what the brand name was. But uh, they're fairly common, and they have the good gear in them, and they all have good bolts, higher quality bolts. Definitely high quality rockers, um, 
and no doubt the crank and everything is of a better grade. So just a little tip I'll share with you. So um, that's what I'm going to go ahead and do now. Just grind that down, put a hole in there, press our uh, steel tube in there with our Venturi um, angle cut on it. Or well, the angle cut on it so it acts like a venturi and sucks our HHO in. Um, and uh, in the next video, when I've got all that done and everything's all set up, we're going to give it a run and see how it goes and see if there is a gain. So thanks for watching, guys. Um, just my handy little tip if you're going to get into this HHO, zero point in putting it before the carburetor, the carby. Still going to deliver the same amount of gasoline to the engine when we're trying our best to reduce it. We can run leaner when we introduce our HHO because it's a second fuel and allows us to run lean, allows us to run a higher compression ratio because the HHO increases the octane rating of the fuel. Um, so it's a win-win situation all around. But we've got to put it together and see... Um, if there is actually a gain first. Okay, see you next video when we fire this monster up and see if we can cause some explosions outside of the engine.